Good evening. Uh, it's good to be back with you. Uh, we're getting things back to normal. We're very thankful and uh, also thankful that our numbers for our county uh, as well as our state are down. And so we are excited and hoping that we're beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, so to speak. And so we ask that you please continue praying. But it is good to have you tuned in to us uh, for our Bible study this week. Uh, we're going to kind of pick up from the sermon on Sunday uh, a little bit toward the end and kind of go from there. But the title of the Bible study tonight is The River That Runs Through You. And we're going to be looking in the book of John chapter 7. And as we look there, uh, if I could, before we read, uh, I'd like to just kind of remind you about who the Apostle John is and exactly what the Apostle John was trying to do uh, as he was putting... Uh, the words down uh, for this gospel. Uh, it is not a synoptic gospel. It doesn't follow a chronological order. It is the gospel that is trying to bring light on the fact of who Jesus truly is. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul, John was trying uh, to get people to understand that Jesus was the Son of God and that he was also the Savior predicted by the prophets in the Old Testament. And one of the things that John uses, now he doesn't use it very often, is he uses some type of imagery. And tonight we're going to be looking at a passion, portion of Scripture in the book of John, chapter 7, verses 37, 38, and 39, where he uses imagery to try to get the point across. And so, if you will, look with me as we look to the book of John, chapter 7, verse 37. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not entered into his glory. Now, just also so that we can understand what is going on, I'm going to read uh, a few other verses uh, beginning here at verse 40. When the crowds heard him say this, some of them declared, surely this man is the prophet we've been expecting. Others said, he is the Messiah. Still others said, but he can't be. Will the Messiah come from Galilee? For the scriptures clearly state that the Messiah will be born of the royal line of David in Bethlehem, the village where King David was born. So the crowd was divided about him. Some even wanted him arrested, but no one laid a hand on it. I'm going to skip down, if you will, to verse 46. We have never heard anyone speak like this, the guards responded. Have you been led astray to the Pharisees mock? Is there a single one of us rulers or Pharisees who believes in him? The foolish crowd follows him, but they are ignorant of the law. God's curse is upon him. Verse 50, Nicodemus, the leader who had met with Jesus earlier, spoke up. Is it legal to convict a man before he is given a hearing, he asked. They replied, are you from Galilee too? Search the scriptures and see for yourself. No prophet ever comes from Galilee. Little, little background just to kind of let you understand what's going on. 
If you begin to go to chapter 7, you will notice in verse 25, the subtitle that is in my Bible actually says, Is Jesus the Messiah? Which is exactly what John is trying to prove, that Jesus is who he said he was. So now, if you will, here in verse 37, what we begin to find is we begin to find John talking about the power of the Spirit that can be in each of us. The river is our symbolism for this passage of Scripture. And what we find is we find as we get down into verse 39 that this living water that is being spoken of is a gesture about the coming of the Holy Spirit. But what we need to understand is what this means when it starts saying rivers of living water will flow from his heart. In other words, from the heart of Christ into us. What does this really mean? Well, it involves God's wisdom being given to us. It involves uh, the discernment of the Spirit, the strength, encouragement, the direction that we get. But the imagery is about a river. You know, a lot of us that live in this area of North Carolina, uh, we have a lot of creeks coming off mountains and different things like this. We happen to have a big creek that is right here in front of the church, right behind the parsonage. Uh, we enjoy it so very much. So we understand when, when we're talking about bodies of water, we kind of get an understanding of that. So what I want to do tonight is I want to look at this illustration just real quickly, and I want to bring out two points of this illustration. The first thing that Jesus says is anyone who is thirsty may come. I want you to understand, anyone who is thirsty may come. Number one, we as people need to be thirsty for more of God. The sacrifice of Jesus hasn't been offered yet, but it's coming. His death is coming. The defeat of the grave, death, hell, Satan, all of that is coming. The penalty and the price of sin Jesus is going to pay for. And you see, Jesus is thinking about all of this as he begins to speak here in John chapter 7. This is kind of what's happening. And this we know. We know that the gift that Jesus provided us of salvation through his death and resurrection, we understand that it is for all people. All. No one's excluded. It doesn't matter if they're following false gods now. It doesn't matter if they're atheistic right now. It doesn't matter what they have done in the past. Jesus died so that everyone, everyone would have the opportunity to receive eternal life. But more than that, that we as people can live through this life with a heart that's full of love, a heart that cares about other people. We can do this because of what Jesus has done for us. But before that transformation can happen within us, we need to be thirsty for more of Jesus. We've got to be thirsty Number two, the river of God then will run through us. If we seek Jesus, guess what? He's going to seek us. He's going to run to us. He thought of us as he was on the cross. 
But Jesus will not only come into our heart and life and change us inwardly, the inward change will make a difference in our outward dealings, our, even our outward appearance maybe. When Jesus comes on board, when the river of Jesus begins to run through us, great things begin to happen. And that river of God that flows through us it can't leave us the way we are. It has to change us. And to better understand this, I would like to look at three things real quick, three different points about a river. Number one, a river is persistent. What do I mean by that? Well, I basically mean this. A river is persistent because it always is flowing. I have lived here, Becky and I have been here for over 11 years. We have lived through uh, several floods. We have lived through times where we hadn't received much rain, but you know that the creek has always been running. It's always been running. It's always been persistent. It's a constant. I think of air. You know, air surrounds us. I can't see it, but I know it's there. The reason I know it's there is because I'm able to breathe. And the oxygen I take in from the air oxygenates my blood. It, it makes me be able to live. So I know it's there. I can't feel it. I can't touch it. But it's there. And it's not just there. It's always. It's always there. Think of the sun and the moon. I don't know about you, but I've never thought about the sun not coming up. And I've never thought about the moon not showing up after the sun goes down. Never thought about it. Why? Because they're constants. They always happen. Well, it's the same way with the river. Same way with the creek behind the parsonage. It's always running. It's always running. You know, as people, can we can go through some rough times. We can go through some wonderful days and we can go through some awful days. But you know, regardless of the circumstances and regardless of the day that we have had, God is always there. The river of God, the Holy Spirit that runs through us is persistent. We don't have to worry about him going away. We don't have to worry about him taking a vacation. We don't have to worry about the circumstances of life becoming so so heavy that, 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 that he is not there. We know that greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. We know that. It's the same way with a river. A river is persistent. Second thing about a river is that a river can develop obstacles. During our massive flood a couple years ago, I looked out our window and I saw trees flying down the creek. They were flying down the creek, tree after tree. I mean, they were flying. But you know what happens when trees go flying down our creek? Eventually, they're going to start piling up. They're going to pile up in culverts. They're going to pile up where things begin to narrow. And when they begin to pile up, an obstruction happens. Now, because of an obstruction happened, we have several families in our church that were stranded. 
But here's the thing about the river. The river finds a way. That means that sometimes because of that obstruction, because of that obstacle, that the river might redirect. It's going to find a path. It's going to keep flowing. The obstruction or the obstacle is not going to keep the river from rolling, from moving, from going. It's not going to stop it. It is not. Water finds a way. Even if it has to go underground, water will find a way. It'll go underground and it'll pop up somewhere else. Water will find a way. Now you know where I'm going here. You know where I'm going. Jesus always finds a way. doesn't matter what we're going through. doesn't matter what our day has been like. It doesn't matter the circumstances in which we're dealing with. Jesus is always going to be there. The obstructions that we come across in life, they're not going to keep Jesus from showing up and fighting for you. It's not going to happen. There is no circumstance, none, that Satan can throw that can keep the river of God from flowing through us. Water will find a way, and so will God. We go through the difficulties. God's presence is with us. But I will tell you this, folks. Satan will do anything he can to separate us from God. But as I've heard an old preacher one time say, we go to hell over the body of Christ. Jesus laid his life down for us. And if water finds a way, there is nothing that's going to keep Jesus from us. Number three. Rivers sustain life. Go back to the book of Genesis. Look in chapter 2. We begin to talk about the creation of the world. We begin to look at things a little more detailed in chapter 2. And as we begin to read that, we find that there is a river that runs through the Garden of Eden. It said that it goes off into four branches. You see, this river is needed. Because the river sustains life. You might say, really? Sure. Civilizations have started when you have a water source. Water is needed for life. Our bodies need water for us to live. Water sustains life. Water causes plants to grow. Plants give off fruits and vegetables. Also in water we find fish and other aquatic plants and things like that that we can eat. Rivers, water sustains life. And you also know where I'm going now to. If we keep our focus on God, and if we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, regardless of the size of the obstacles, God will overcome for us. But I'm here to tell you, folks, never allow anything to come between you and Jesus. Jesus didn't let suffering on the cross come between you and him. I'm asking you to keep your focus on Jesus. Never let Satan throw anything up that will come between you and Jesus. 
And you see, folks, this is the thing about the river that runs through us, the power of God, the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter the size of the obstacle. Because the size of the obstacle is irrelevant when it comes to Jesus. Our focus needs to be on him. You remember Joseph that we talked about Sunday? Joseph at the time was the youngest brother. His brothers didn't like it because daddy liked him. It seemed best. Uh, Dad made him a coat of many colors we all have heard about. And um, about, well, most of the brothers wanted him dead. Uh, they decided that they would just sell him off as a slave. And I really believe if you had asked Joseph, hey, Joseph, would you want to be sold off as a slave and live as a slave? for the first, first part of your life? I'm sure his answer would be no. But you see, the plan of God was to get Joseph to a point where he could take care of nations. See, God knew that there was a drought coming. It was a famine. Animals were dying. There wasn't water to be found. And without water again, you can't grow crops. And God has given Joseph this understanding. And after several years, Joseph finds himself second in command in Egypt. And what we find is that his brothers make their way down to Egypt because they're trying to survive. And because Joseph is where he is. Joseph's family is going to live. You see, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. I don't think Joseph would have said, yeah, I'll be a slave, yeah. But if he hadn't, his family would have died. So we come to the conclusion this evening. John is talking about rivers that run through us, meaning the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always there leading, guiding us through life. It is the Holy Spirit that enables us to be overcomers, to overcome obstacles. And it is the Holy Spirit that will lead us to a deeper walk with Christ. We just have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Father, I pray that you will touch each of us, that you help us to keep our eyes on you. Lord, we know that the way we want to go is the way that you're leading. Father, that is the way for us personally, that's the way we want for our families, that's the what we want for our church, it's what we want for our state, our nation. So, Father, help us to keep our eyes on you. Father, thank you for this time. Bless each person that is viewing. Bless our church. Bless all those that are sick. And, Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come. Amen. I hope each of you have a good rest of this evening, and God bless.